Jack, you won here last year and you must be absolutely delighted to get that win today. It must have been very unexpected. Well, it, it was after uh, the first pit stop. Um, the start was pretty bad. I, know, I don't know if I had wheel spin or the clutch slip, but uh, I didn't go anywhere. And then the, the beginning of the, of the race was just following the others and taking it easy. And, and that was good because I kept my tires in good shape and everybody else in front of me blistered. So uh, then I managed to get uh, behind Damon, but Damon was really flying. We, I could keep up with him on the first set of tires, but uh, as soon as uh, I went to the other tires, I did a few slow laps to make sure the tires would hold on pretty well. And uh, they blistered and Damon just disappeared. So he was really, really flying. But at the same time, I thought... You know, there's no way he can finish. <laughs> I was, I was feeling pretty, pretty good, but towards the end of the race, it was looking pretty grim because uh, he was actually going on and on and on um, until two laps from the end, where the <clears throat> my pit crew told me that uh, he was slowing down. So I started pushing again, and when I got towards him, uh, he was going left and right. So I thought he had a broken suspension, uh, but I, you know, I knew he was going to block me. It was normal on the last lap, so I just went in the grass, and the car was pretty good in the grass. Were you at all worried after Heinz Harrell dropped out? Did you worry about your own, your own car? No, um, I'm not sure why uh, he dropped out. Uh, I didn't know, but uh, it's a shame because uh, he, we didn't have the same tires and uh, he wasn't going to have problems with tires, so I'm sure he, he would have uh, had a good fight with Damon uh, if he had stayed in the race. Jack, well done. Well, Damon, it's taken 11 races for, for you almost to win today. It must have been absolutely gutting that last, that last couple of laps. Well, I was uh, getting to the point when I thought where I could... Uh, count on you know winning the race but uh, whenever you think things like that something crops up and I had a hydraulic pump problem which meant that I couldn't use the, the throttle started to work intermittently and I couldn't change gear so that was really uh, you know I needed 40 seconds really not 30 seconds on Jack. You made a good start and then you, you took uh, Michael Schumacher America without much of a problem can you can you talk us through those first sort of 20 laps or so? Yeah, I mean the first uh, couple of laps he was uh, pulling away and then you could I managed to close in on him quite easily and you could see that his tyres were blistering. And so I knew that that was uh, going to be a problem for him. And I, but I also knew I had to get past him because I knew I could go quicker and there were cars coming up behind. So once I got clear, I, got overtake, I overtook him in the first corner. Once I got some clear track, I was able to uh, maximise and uh, you know, optimise everything we had. And uh, it, it went perfectly. The race went really well. And uh, I'm very, very pleased uh, for the team and for, for Bridgestone. They did a, a good job here at Hungary and uh, obviously slightly disappointed that we didn't manage to win it. Now your best position so far this year has been sixth. What, is there one factor that you can pinpoint this weekend that has, has made you so much more competitive? Well there's not one particular thing really but uh, you know we've, we've made little improvements everywhere but uh, I've been, I was able to use my experience here and, uh, and uh, work well with the team to, to get the good set, uh, good set up for the race. Damon well done. Well, Johnny, we haven't seen you in the top three since Monaco 96, so a great result for you this afternoon. Yeah, no, I think it's good for the team because uh, we've had a couple of opportunities of probably getting a podium finish earlier in the year, uh, and I think it's, it's, it's very good for morale within the team. You started 10th today. Had you any hopes of finishing in the top three? Uh, you, always, you always hope. I, I know we always have a, a better race than normally what our qualifying is, so, uh, so I was optimistic that I'd get points. Um, and it was just a factor of uh, really trying to look after my tyres as much as I could. And when I came out after my uh, last stop, I had Michael behind, and basically it was just a, a matter of looking at his, uh, you know, his times and just trying to gauge it. Do you think we might see you in the top three again this season? Well, I hope so. As I said, we should have had some uh, earlier in the season. And, uh, you know, if we work hard enough and we can get some development bits going, there's no reason why we can't do it again. Jacques, we go to spot. Well, there we are then, two Brits uh, on the podium, but uh, desperate disappointment, really, for Damon Hill. Coming up, we've got a competition. You can be with us for the last Grand Prix of the season in Jerez, and we'll be talking to Simon and to Tony about the dramas of the Hungarian Grand Prix. <laughs> So then second for Damon Hill and second for Tom Walkinshaw, the Arrows boss, so near to his first Grand Prix victory. Tom's talking now to James. It's a wonderful day, whatever happens, but you're a racer. You, you, I can see on your face you wanted to win. Yeah, you know, we lost, we came second, so, uh, you know, we should have won it with 30 seconds of a lead with two laps to go, you know, and then uh, he was only cruising and then uh, loses the hydraulic pressure and, uh, you know, it's, uh, yeah, it's not easy. Huh? Nevertheless, you made a pretty significant point today, haven't you? Yeah, I think we can prove the team is now strong and the car is good and uh, there's a lot of work being done in the engine. The tyres were superb and, and Damon did a fantastic job. You know, he deserved to win, but, uh, well, I suppose that's, that's motor racing. I don't ever win until you pass the finish line. How's that, Tom? Thanks.
I've done plenty of pain, I'm thinking those eyes behind the dark glasses. But what a start Damon Hill got. I mean, from the word go, he was here and he was going to do the business and he was away brilliantly. Well, he's been brilliant all weekend. He was great on Friday, he was better on Saturday. And then this is the start with Hill hidden behind the red Ferrari of Michael Schumacher, third on the grid. Villeneuve on the left of, the, of your picture and look at that start that Hill makes. He's almost alongside Schumacher. He's shutting the door on Irvine who's looking dangerous behind him, slots into second place and that's how you see Hill's experience coming to bear. The Ferrari's gone into the lead. Hill is making sure that he's consolidating that second place, keeping, Villeneuve, uh, keeping uh, the Ferrari of Irvine out, which was a good job there. And the man is experienced, the man is smooth. He deserved to win today. Of course he did. And then another dice with Schumacher. That, that was terrific stuff, wasn't it? With, with Damon nudging him and saying, well, hey, I'm here, move over. That was a $25 million man versus a 4.5 uh, million pound man. And uh, Hill was worth everything today. And this is it. Now, what we've got to watch for here is we thought that there was a little bit of a nudge here by Hill coming into the last corner. Now, that could have been Schumacher looking in his mirrors, seeing Hill closing in and just coming off the throttle a bit and saying, you know, I'll have you if you come in that close. It's a little bit dangerous but then Damon is lined up perfectly. He's perfectly distanced in the slipstream and he slots out at absolutely the right time. Just nicks through on the apex there and takes first place brilliantly. And that's why Damon is worth what he is. Look at that, inch perfect, because he slices past. And that's Damon and all his skill at his yeah. best. That's why he's got such a great value in the marketplace and uh, his value he would have gone up and up. Either, is he? Now William to be happy with Villeneuve, not so much with Heinz Harold Frentzen. Yep. Um, well, once again, Williams have been lucky with that victory for Villeneuve, but once again, it hasn't been Heinz Harold Frensen's. Look at this picture very carefully. You see something flying off the back of the car, bouncing along the tarmac on that very long shot, followed half a lap later by that burst of flame, which was oil getting into the exhaust. He came into the pits, off comes the steering wheel in despair, and you can see from the body language as he gets out, that once again, this has been a dreadful day for friends. And what does that man have to do to finish mm. a race? Now the moment where everybody in Britain said, oh, I can't believe what I'm seeing here. I can't believe what's happening. Louise did so well to signpost it yeah. for us uh, from the pits there. But uh, what about what happened to Damon? Well, the thing is, that at, for a time, we thought he wasn't going to make it at all because the car started stuttering. That potentiometer, which is in the gearbox, is actually a sensor which helps the gearbox change gear. It was not helped then, as Damon said afterwards, by the hydraulic pump actually letting down, so the pressure not getting through, and him not being able to change the gears and punch the little levers there properly behind the wheel. Agonizing, he's, he's used to that. You know, obviously as the car went past there, but for Damon, it's terrible. Could he keep it going? He even weaved from side to side to try and get the connections to go back together. In all that length of time, he thought it's about to stop any moment. And this is the part where Villeneuve dived past. Now, it wasn't actually Damon weaving in front of him on purpose. He was weaving to try and get the connection to come back together. Villeneuve feared the worst and just to make sure ran across the grass, but that was where he lost it. Right, thanks both very much indeed for that to see two British drivers on the podium for the first time this season. Johnny Herbert doing really well to get that third place, but massive sympathy for Damon Hill with Villeneuve really pickpocketing the 10 points. Well, very many congratulations. I bet you didn't expect that. No, uh, I didn't. You know, uh, halfway through the race when we were second and Damon in front, I thought, okay, there's a good chance that Damon will not finish. But uh, after the second pit stop, then I wasn't hoping for that anymore. And I was just uh, trying to keep my tires intact. Uh, until, you know, three laps from the end, uh, the, the, the pit crew told me that uh, Damon was slowing down at a hell of a rate, so I uh, just picked it up, started pushing again, and, and caught up with him on, on, on the back straight. Uh, of course, he tried to block me uh, a little bit harshly, but, uh, you know, it was the last lap, so it was expected. Uh, I had to go uh, in the grass to get him, but uh, I wasn't going to lift. A few words on uh, how Damon must be feeling right now, what do you reckon? Well, d disappointed. Uh, happy, of course, but disappointed because uh, he really drove well. He, there's no way I could catch him, and uh, he had the race in his pocket. So, you know, it's, it's a shame for him. It's, uh, I'm sure it's a huge disappointment that he didn't win because, uh, you know, the race was his. But uh, for the championship, it's very good for us. Damon, I just don't know where to start. <laughs> I'm not sure you don't either. Ah, uh, well, I just, uh, uh, someone said to me, you know, is it, uh, did, you, did you feel like you uh, lost a win or, or won a second place today? I, I have to say that. You know, it's, uh, it's a good result, second place, but when you actually were running at the front and uh, expecting to win, then you do feel a little bit disappointed. Well, you've got a lot of experience at running at the front. It must have felt great when you got up there again. It was feeling fantastic, and I was able to keep a gap on, on Jack and, uh, and keep pushing, and I was really in a groove and, and going well.
When did you realise something was amiss? Three laps before the end, I came out of the uh, chicane and the throttle wouldn't, uh, wouldn't shut when I lifted off. And uh, I thought, that's a bit strange, maybe it's my foot. And then about uh, three or four corners after that, it wouldn't start, it wouldn't change gear properly. And then the throttle went on a blink completely. And a few times, the car just stopped almost completely. Uh, so I really was amazed we managed to get to the end. I, realize, Tom, I understand that Tom was talking around to the last lap. Yeah, I had Tom on the radio all the, all the race because uh, we wanted to keep in good uh, communication. And, uh, and uh, so uh, I was talking to Tom right from the very word go. But uh, he was saying, trying to keep it in fifth gear. But by that point, I couldn't get any gears at all. I was stuck in second. Well done, Johnny. What a result. I know. Well, I must talk to you more on the grid. Nice to be back up there on the rostrum again. No, well, it's good. We had a good uh, sort of beginning of the year. And sort of things went a little bit uh, not in the right direction. And it's, bit, it's still difficult this weekend. Again, qualifying was a little bit better. But uh, we need to work a lot harder on getting things more developed so we can keep up with the big teams. And I think that's one area I'm, you know, I'm going to push for. A somewhat different uh, one, two, three. What's your view on that? Oh, yeah, that's, uh, I think it's a great result. I am uh, a little bit sorry for them that he couldn't keep it up to the end. So something must have happened in the last uh, lap or laps, I don't know. Uh, done a great uh, weekend, Damon, actually, and a fantastic race. It was like an old, old days, uh, we two battling. Unfortunately, I, I couldn't fight back, uh, but maybe next time. Where do you go from here, then, Damon? You think you can do this again this season? It's possible, yeah. I don't see why not. I mean, it's going to be uh, more difficult. I think this is one of the circuits that, that really gave us our best opportunity. But uh, we'll keep trying and, uh, and look ahead to the other races. Brilliant. Well done. Thank Thanks you. A lot. So the Drivers' Championships closed up again with six races to go. Schumacher's lead now down to three points as Villeneuve wins for the fifth time. And Williams make up ground on Ferrari in the Constructors' Championship as well. Just a couple of points in it now. It really is one heck of a battle. We saw a heck of a Grand Prix here today. Sum it up for us, Martin. A great sporting event with a finish that would suit a Hollywood movie, I'd say. Tony? Justification for Arrows and Yamaha and justification for Tom Walkinshaw, but the choker of the year. Simon? And on the tight and slippery circuits at least, we now know Damon Hill in an Arrows is a potential winner. He looked uh, a winner from the start here today, didn't he? He got a magnificent start. Yeah, he did. Damon Hill said he was going to go for it. He was going to put the pedal to the metal right from the very start. There was Villeneuve on the inside in second place on the dirty side of the track. Schumacher in the spare Ferrari got away well, but just look at Damon Hill there, starting like a bullet. He gets stuck behind Schumacher for a while. His problem now is Eddie Irvine on his inside. Now, Irvine said he was going to try and get past Hill. He was determined to do that. He thought he was going to be the mobile chicane. Irvine has another bite at him around the inside, on the outside there, and Hill defended the position brilliantly to retain that second place. Then it was, ben, it was uh, Hill against Schumacher. Simon, he nibbled away, he nibbled away, and he got past him. Well, it was absolutely tremendous to see him pushing and pushing, and now he's really anxious because the rest of the field, see that quartet behind the battling duo at the front, have caught up. And on this final corner, at the end of lap 10, Schumacher makes a small mistake. Hill almost touches the back of him, and this allowed him to get a run on Schumacher as they came down the straight and wait for Hill to dart out of the slipstream. There he goes, very late on the brakes. Schumacher tries to shut the door, but Hill a reigning world champion is a wily fellow and he's not going to be put off watch now in slow motion Schumacher almost pushes him on the grass but it's not going to delay Damon Hill very fine driving now Martin what about that end I mean I felt a bit of emotion and you must have felt it even more well the team are destroyed as you can imagine I mean obviously a second place is is something worth having it sticks points in the bag but they did everything right this weekend and you can see Hill now already having his problems it was a little bladder in the hydraulic system, lost the pressure. Now that hydraulic system operates both the throttle and the gear shift. Now Damon initially was stuck in second gear. They radioed to him, tried to get it up to fifth. He tried it, went as far as third, but then it would go no further. And then the throttle became intermittent as well. So he was watching his mirrors all the time, careful not to let any back markers run into him. And he saw Villeneuve coming up behind him. I said, well, you weren't really wandering around in front of him. He said, well, I knew he was coming, but uh, I wanted to make it as hard as I could for him. How uh, close was he to not finishing at all then? Well, that's the miracle of the whole thing because there's a safety mode there and it should switch itself down to idle, which the car did. So Damon had little more than idle speed in third gear and somehow he got it to the end of the race. I mean, it could have been no points at all. If we peep into the pits, we can see how distraught they all were down there. 
Well, I think you've, that pretty much sums up the feeling of the whole team. Tom Walkinshaw is very unhappy. Damon is extremely disappointed. But look at these guys. They've been working so hard all year. They've changed so many engines. The car's been in the wall a few times. And they're at all just for the taking is their first win. Arrow's first win, Yamaha's first win, Bridgestone's first win. And uh, it just fell away, didn't it, with a minute and a half to go. It's a cruel game. Thanks all. Well, 22 starters at the Ungaro ring. Here's how they finished up. Villeneuve repeating his 96 win, then Hill and Herbert, followed by the Schumacher brothers and the Prost of Nakano and Trulli. Berger, the only man on the same lap, finishing eighth. One lap behind Irvine, Katayama and Alesi. Two laps adrift, Marquez and Salo. 13 finishes in all. Coulthard's alternator went. Verstappen's air compressor into the gearbox let him down. Deniz had the same problem as Coulthard. Fisichella spun off. Barrichello's engine failed. Frentzen's fuel nozzle was faulty. Hakkinen's gearbox went. Morbidelli had engine trouble. And Magnussen Stewart was damaged early on. A couple of weeks' time, we're back from Belgium. Qualifying live, 11.45 on the Saturday. Murray and Martin with F1 Special at 5.20. Always worth watching that one. And the Grand Prix live, only on ITV at 12.20, with highlights at 11.10. Damon Hill didn't win here today. In sport, you don't always get what you deserve. But throughout the weekend, Damon Hill showed all the qualities that make him a British world champion to be cherished. Good night. Thank you.